Hey, my name is Lisa, and this is my best friend, Taylor. One day, Taylor got dumped by her boyfriend because she kept sending him 20 to 30 text messages per day, asking where he was and what he was doing. Taylor was devastated over the breakup, so I came up with a plan to get her back with her ex. I got my hands on some MRI cancer scans and told Taylor to use them to guilt her ex, Justin, back into a relationship. She sat down with him and said, The doctors say I have less than a year to live. Is it okay if we get back together until, you know, I'm dead? Oh my god, of course. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. I will make sure your last year will be the best year of your life. Well, their new relationship only lasted two months. Then Justin broke up with Taylor again. And this time, because Taylor had lost her temper and stabbed him in the face with a broom, giving him a black eye. Afterward, she also destroyed his aquarium with his fish inside. She proudly told me that none of the fish survived. I told you she was violent, but what I didn't understand back then was that if Taylor was willing to hurt her boyfriend, that she was also willing to hurt me, her best friend. Anyway, a couple months later, I found my first boyfriend. My dad introduced me to him and said, This is Malcolm. He is working at my company and he is very talented. He might even become the CEO one day. My dad was obviously trying to set us up as a couple, and it worked. Malcolm and I went on a date, but he was extremely pushy. Don't you want to cuddle a bit? It's our first date. Let's wait before we get intimate with each other. Oh my god, you're such a killjoy. At least take your bra off so I can rub sunscreen on your back. I didn't want to, but he continued. Please don't tell me you were scared. He always tried to pressure me into doing things I wasn't comfortable with. Meanwhile, at school, Taylor was super jealous that I had a boyfriend and she didn't. She even told me, break up with Malcolm, he is a loser. Well, one day we were all at a party, and while I went to the bathroom, Taylor asked my boyfriend Malcolm to follow her upstairs into a room. She said, Your girlfriend wants you to sit on that chair and put this blindfold on. She has bought a sexy dress and wants to surprise you. Then Taylor left the room, just to come back inside again pretending to be me. She also turned the camera on her smartphone on and filmed herself sitting down on my boyfriend's lap and kissing him. After a while, my boyfriend took off his blindfold. What the hell are you doing here? Huh? We are just having some fun. Also, the door is locked. Your girlfriend will never find out about this. Instead of pushing Taylor off his lap, Malcolm let her kiss him for another whole minute. Okay, that was enough for tonight, but maybe we can go further next time. Wait, but you won't tell Lisa about it, or? What? Me? No, I would never do that. Well, of course, Taylor did exactly that. She immediately showed me the video of her making out with Malcolm. It was heartbreaking to watch my first boyfriend cheat on me. Malcolm even had the audacity to pretend he'd done nothing wrong. Hey, what's up? I know what you did. You let Taylor kiss you, and you knew it was her! What? You already know? Oh, God. I guess I drank too much vodka tonight and made an honest mistake. You liar! And you aren't drunk at all! I'm going to tell my dad that you cheated on me, so he will fire you from your job. Suddenly, Malcolm became very serious. He pressed his hand over my mouth and said, No, you won't tell your dad. I need this job, and I'm sorry I kissed your friend, but don't forget everything I've done for you. How many times I've helped you study for your school exams? You owe me big time. Hush, Malcolm. You're a cheating scumbag, so leave her alone. No, you hush up, Taylor. You just kissed my boyfriend. Actually, he kissed me back. We were fully making out, and we even used our tongues. My heart told me to break up with Malcolm, but I also knew he was right. He had done a lot for me, and I owed him. So out of guilt, I stayed his girlfriend. Then, two weeks later, my dad took me and Malcolm on a trip to the Bahamas, where we had to share a bed. Come on, let's have some fun. We're on holidays. No, I won't sleep with you. I'm still mad at you for kissing Taylor. But that wasn't the only reason I was mad at him. I also wondered if Malcolm was only dating me to be closer to my dad. What if Malcolm didn't actually love me? That same day, my dad said, Come, kiss each other for the camera. I don't want to. Oh god, stop ruining everything. Just kiss your boyfriend, you dumb brat. Screw you, dad. You don't give me orders. I pulled out my phone and showed my dad the video of Malcolm and Taylor making out. He finished watching it and said, Explain yourself, Malcolm. It's not fair. I was tricked. I had a blindfold on, and honestly, I was so drunk that night that no one can hold me responsible for what I did. That's not true. You only pretended to be drunk so you had an excuse for kissing my best friend. Well, apparently my dad loves Malcolm more than me, because he took his side and told me, 
You brat. Can't you see how lucky you are to have a boyfriend like Malcolm? He could easily find a better girl than you. Hold your tongue, Dad. And he isn't my boyfriend anymore. It's over between us. Ha! <laughs> as long as you live under my roof, I decide who you're dating, and right now, that's Malcolm. I flipped my dad off, to which he said, You keep Malcolm as your boyfriend, or I will throw you out of my house. You can't throw me out! I'm only 17! Of course I can. I just have to go to the government and declare you as ungovernable. I can file for a child in need of services petition, which means you will end up in foster care. You would never do that! Oh, you'll see! Better enjoy the rest of your vacation, because you'll soon move into a children's home. I didn't talk to my dad or Malcolm for the remaining days we spent in the Bahamas, but now that they were both single, my dad invited a bunch of working girls into our beach house every night to party with him and Malcolm. It was disgusting. And after we flew back home, my dad followed through on his promise to declare me ungovernable, just so he could throw me out of his house. But instead of going to a children's home, I knocked on Taylor's door. Hey, can I crash on your couch for a few weeks? Well, well, well. First you replaced me with your boyfriend, and now you're on your knees begging for shelter. Oh, stop it. I have always been a good friend to you. Maybe, but I don't care. Have a good day. She shut the door, and I learned an important lesson, namely to choose my friends more wisely in the future. However, despite losing everything, I wasn't worried about my future. All I cared about was getting revenge on my dad for what he'd done to me. I wanted to embarrass him and make him pay for abandoning me. By now, you can probably tell that I had some serious daddy issues. Now let me ask you a question. Did you also have a creepy PE teacher in your high school? One that seemed to like his female students a bit too much? If so, welcome to the club. Our PE teacher, Mr. Francis, was living right next to our school, and so right on my 18th birthday, I paid him a visit. After all, I was an adult now. Hey, Mr. Francis, I'm sorry to disturb you, but my dad threw me out and I wondered if I could stay at your place for a while, please. There was a woman next to him, who I guess was his girlfriend. Of course you can stay. I have an extra bed upstairs. Wait, but that's where I sleep. Oh, God. This pretty girl needs a place to stay, so get out of my house. He then shoved the woman down the stairs and let me in. Oh, yes, Mr. Francis was the exact kind of boyfriend I needed to make my dad angry. The woman you threw out, was she your girlfriend? Yes, we've been dating for a year, but I was just waiting for the right moment to break up with her, because last month she asked me if I wanted to have kids. Well, who knows? Maybe I can become your new girlfriend. It's weird. My teacher was good-looking, but in secret, I wished he was an ugly, fat old man because I knew that would upset my dad more. In fact, that's exactly what I did a year later. I was 19 when I went, all dressed up into a biker bar, and sat down next to the meanest-looking guy inside. He was really fat and in his 40s. I told him, you can take me out on a date, but you have to promise me something. I want you to drive me on your bike to my dad's house. I have to pick up some stuff there. Sure, whatever my princess wants. It was perfect. The next day, we drove to my dad and the bike was so loud, we didn't even have to knock on the door for my dad to come out. What is going on here? My new daddy drove me here. Isn't he cute? I only came to pick up some of my stuff. My dad followed me into the house and berated me. How can you date a guy like that? You should feel ashamed of yourself. His name is Rick, and yes, he has a few STDs, but I still love him, and who knows, you might become a grandfather soon. He lost it and screamed, Get out of my house, you filthy girl! You are no longer my daughter! In the end, I probably accomplished my mission to make my dad angry. I even got pregnant by the biker and sent photos of us to all of my dad's employees for Christmas. But whether doing all this just to get back at my dad was worth it, well, that is another question.